Hey, it's Joseph here. Today I've got a bit of a setup here since I'm trying to do a comparison between two type of eGPUs and the graphics card. And starting on my right side over here is Razer Core X eGPU, which I have equipped with NVIDIA RTX 2080 Super. And here is a laptop that I am pairing with. It is a white version of MSI Summit 13 series, which I am currently doing of a review, but I did unbox very recently, so you can check that video out. But these two are paired up together. And on this side, on the exact same laptop, just the black version, so again MSI Summit 13 model, but the eGPU choice over here is Cooler Masters, I forget the exact model name, and it is equipped with Radeon RX 6600. And this one is actually my very first AMD graphics card that I have owned. So I wanted to do a bit of a testing here and there and do a bit of a comparison and see how it performs against some of the good graphics card that I have my hands on. Therefore, this video just kind of merged all together. And since I had two laptops with the same exact spec, just a different color, I thought it would be a good opportunity to test both of the parts out and perhaps even compare these two eGPUs since I'm intending to use these eGPUs for work purposes. So just kind of talk in general what they are, what I intend to do with them, that sort of thing. This is more of a green side NVIDIA and then here is the red side Radeon AMD side and traditionally I always have recommended NVIDIA cards over AMD cards just because of the CUDA cores that you'll be able to leverage in a lot of rendering softwares it just means that in a basic terms a lot of softwares that we use in daily basis are just made for NVIDIA cards so they just kind of talk to each other other very well. However, on the other side, the AMD side, they have been somewhat cheaper in some ways and also they really have taken off on the gaming area therefore there's nothing really that really lacks on this side either however because of the overall graphics card shortage that we have nowadays you really gotta get whatever graphics card that you can get your hands on so when you are just able to get AMD graphics card can we actually use it for work purposes other than gaming and actually for the latest update of Enscape in included updates for the AMD graphics card. So I just thought I would just kind of test things out and see how it works. And before I go ahead and compare the two different type of graphics card over here, I also wanted to just kind of draw the differences between this eGPU from Razer and this eGPU from the Cooler Master. And if we just kind of compare the overall physicality and the size sort of things, Razer Core X is actually a lot bigger than this one. In terms of the weight, they're both quite heavy, including the power supply and graphics card. They just become really heavy and chunky. So portability, eh, it will not be something that you want to carry around necessarily. But this one is definitely bulkier in that aspect. And you can kind of see the light that is coming on. Maybe it is not as apparent on the screen, but this one has RGB lights both on the side and the front. You can actually turn it off by just unplugging the connection. Yeah, I haven't really turned it off because it's a good way for me to know the eGPU is on, but I perhaps will turn it off if I'm using this all the time. And on the contrary, the one from Cooler Master does not have any RGB lights or any sort of lights for you to know whether this is on or not. But both of them have power button on the power supply on the back for you to just switch on and off. In terms of the modularity, actually for Razer Core, all you need to do is basically there is a lever here in which you slide and then the entire graphics card just slides out of this casing so which actually makes swapping out graphics card very very easy there's not much of screw involved there's a one thumb screw that you're gonna have to remove in order to get your graphics card out and that is very simple and I can actually do that very very quickly and on the Cooler Master swapping out graphics card is not as easy as just sliding your graphics card out but overall modularity is completely one over here. 
because you can pop both sides of the panel with just thumb screws and you can even pop the top here out so that you can install different type of fan if you wanted to or add more fan and also the power supply inside of here is just a regular SFX power supply therefore you can either replace it or even use that power supply for something else so just know that you're getting regular power supply when you're purchasing this eGPU and on the front panel it is just magnetically held and it is a very well hinged panel that you can can actually install the hard drives into. So I guess it has a bit more functionality than just eGPU and also here is a side bracket that you can adjust so that you can fold your laptop and slide into so that everything is just kind of made very compact. So those are the differences and in a kind of funny way both of these eGPUs are turned I guess to the back to the camera. The reason for that is actually because all the USB-C the Thunderbolt cables are connected from the back for both of these eGPUs and it makes it really difficult if this was oriented the other way. Maybe you make the plug to be connected from the front otherwise yeah having the plug all the way to your laptop from the back it it's not really ideal and these Thunderbolt cables are meant to be very short because the longer they are they introduce more of a latency so yeah you want to keep them short and which means that routing all the way from the back to the laptop is quite difficult so I always end up reversing the orientation of these eGPUs and actually then you can easily connect other type of USB devices because yeah whilst I may connect some peripherals here and there and disconnect them but just reaching to the back would be very difficult so yeah you tend to just look at the back of the eGPU more so than the front which is sort of an irony in a way and in terms of the peripherals and the USB connection, one of the winning points for Razer Core X is the fact that if you connect any of the devices to the USB or the ethernet cable behind the unit, and those will all be connected to your laptop via single cable. And by the way, the single cable carries power as well. So both of these laptops are being charged via these eGPUs. So those are the same, but the data carries through for the Razer Core X, so you don't need to connect any other cable. However, Cooler Master made the decision in not bottlenecking the bandwidth of the single cable. Therefore, if you wanna to connect to any of the hard drives that are inside of this unit or any of the devices that are connected to the USB, then you actually have to route another external cable to your laptop, which is, in my opinion, sort of a downside. Yes, I do want to enjoy the maximum bandwidth of the cable. However, yeah, you're using eGPU for most of convenience, so I'd rather have that option or at least be able to use a couple of USBs so I can at least connect to keyboards and mouse and maybe headphones and such. And for the ethernet on this unit, it is not offered. Therefore, you're gonna need some sort of converter going from regular USB type A to ethernet so that you can actually connect to this laptop. At that point, you're gonna end up with a lot of different type of cables and connection to your laptop. So yeah, that is sort of the downside of this specific eGPU. And in terms of the price of the eGPU, you have to buy them without the graphics card so let alone the inflation of GPU prices for both of these external graphics card enclosures are very expensive and this one is one tier higher because this is Core X Chroma Edition which includes the Ethernet port as well as USBs and the fancy RGB but this one is the only version that I was able to find and both of the prices tend to kind of fluctuate a lot 
So just be ready when you're trying to pull the trigger for purchasing eGPU because they are expensive. Yeah, and in terms of actual performance, I'm actually not expecting these to be varying all that much between eGPU to another type of eGPU because they're just pretty much limited in terms of Thunderbolt 3 bandwidth that are connected to your laptop. My guess is that it is gonna depend on the actual graphics card performance. So in this video, what I'm gonna try to do is actually swap out the graphics card so that this one is actually ran with the same graphics card but different type of eGPU you for the second run of the benchmark just to rule out the performance differences between two type of eGPUs. And in terms of the overall setup, it was quite simple, literally kind of plug and play. You just need to install the graphics card into the enclosure and then just connect with the laptop. As long as the laptop has recognized the graphics card 2080 Super in the device manager, then you can go ahead and download the graphics card driver and install it. Actually, the Razer software will try to install as well. I have canceled it and actually you do not need to install that unless you want to control the RGB lights. The RGB lights are currently just kind of doing a rainbow. You can actually unplug the connection as I have mentioned and which I may just do for the sake of making the overall setup not as RGB heavy. And in terms of this setup, again, you just install the graphics card in here and connect to your your laptop as long as your laptop has recognized the graphics card just download AMD graphics card driver and install it and it worked turn off both of the graphics card and it is really easy on the Razer Core X just unplug this cable here move the laptop out of the way and also you will need to unplug the power so this unit is just by itself and there's a handle over here which you just pull like this and then slide things out. So once the graphics card is actually out, like so, this is just a standalone unit basically. So just unplug the power and then there is one thumb screw and then basically pull out the graphics card that easy. And then I gotta pull out the graphics card out of this eGPU. So unplug both of the cables. And then on this side, there are two thumb screws, which are captive. And then I wanna make sure my laptop is out of the way. And then basically the panel slides out like that. Let me turn this around so you guys could see it. So there is Radeon 6600 and also the top panel just kind of opens like that with magnets and you can install the three and a half drive as well as two and a half inch drive. And I'm gonna open up the side bracket just so that I can get access to this side of panel as well. And then undo these thumb screws and slide the panel out. So it basically exposes both sides of the unit. You can kind of see the regular SFX power supply, whereas this one is just sort of custom made on the razor side. So you can't really swap any of the parts out. And you may want to open up the top panel as well because you need to get access to the cables that are connected to eGPU. You wanna watch that out because there is a fan cable that's connected to the top panel. So you don't wanna drop this or pull it too far out. But I also need to remove this thumb screw for the graphics card bracket not lose that cable or this bracket over here actually two thumb screws so bracket out two thumb screws out and i need to unscrew the screws that are mounted onto the side of the graphics card just like the any other pcie cards i don't think you actually need to do that because this will kind of hold it in its place but for additional security, those screws are available and you can use them. And for your convenience, you may want to just remove this fan header so you can easily work with this graphics card. Okay, 
and there is a little clip on the side of the graphics card that you're going to have to push down to release the graphics card and once you do that then you can just pull it out that thing does not exist on here so there is no lever over here but there is one for this eGPU so sometimes that's a little tricky to get pushed down but yeah it is out you don't slide it out you can't for this size of graphics card you're gonna have to pull it out to the side and it is a gigabyte eagle edition radeon 6600 is the type of graphics card that i got here and here is a graphics card from msi geforce rtx i don't know the specific model name but this is 2080 super so let's swap them out okay let's go ahead and install this 2080 super into the cooler masters eGPU and I get a lot of questions regarding the compatible sizes for external graphics cards especially for the Razer Core it seems like Razer Core is able to take a lot thicker graphics card meaning three slot cards but as you can see here perhaps for the Cooler Master version it is pretty much up to the panel at the moment so there isn't much room but there are bigger room for the Razer Core so I reckon that you might be able to fit bigger cards in there in terms of the overall thickness but as far as the overall length goes there is a bit of a room down here so I could fit much longer cards I don't know the exact measurements so I would consult with the actual manufacturer rather than relying on me. But yeah, at least this graphics card is able to fit in here very comfortably. And I just gotta install this power cable. And I have tested the 3070 Ti Founders Edition in this eGPU in my previous video. So you can certainly watch that if you wanna see how it fits into this Cooler Masters eGPU. Okay, the cable's in. Again, you may not have to do this, but I'm just doing it because I want to be proper. For the same purpose, you would not need to install this case fan for running it temporarily, but just for the fair comparison, I am connecting it. And also, you can install another case fan if you wanted to, as I have mentioned, because you've got another slot that is positioned there. And everything clips and slides in quite nicely, including the captive thumb screws. I just gotta put the side panels back. And the front panel opens up like this and you can install three and a half inch drive at the front as well as a 2.5 but I currently haven't installed any and this is the cable that you're gonna have to use if you want to access those drives and any of the USB peripherals that are connected to the device but I currently don't care for those so I just put the cable in there and then close that so this eGPU is ready to go and then one over here, the Razer Core X Chroma is a lot easier in terms of the installation or swapping of graphics card because you just gotta slide that in, put the thumb screw in, and then just connect the PCIe power here. And this RX 6600 only requires one eight pin, so I just need to connect one of them. If I can line it up properly, there you go and there is an LED connector up front here so I could disconnect that if I want to get rid of the LED effect but other than that that is pretty much good to go I just gotta slot that in like so and then lock it that's it I effectively swapped out the laptops this way so now this one is paired up with the Radeon cards again and this one is paired up with RTX 2080 Super again and it is detecting something and you see how it is showing the installation for the Razer Core X 
but I'm just gonna ignore that because I actually figured that you don't need that. And then if I go to a display adapter, it is showing RX 6600 and it is all in there. Actually, the fans are not turning on for RX 6600. I guess it is because it is not being used. And this one is also detecting RTX 2080 Super and the fans are spinning here. This graphics card does not have zero RPM mode, unfortunately. So now is a time for the benchmark. Regardless of the type of eGPU that you use, you had better performance with NVIDIA RTX 2080 Super, which is kind of expected because it is much more expensive card and also it is much better spec. However, with RX 6600, you are still able to push quite a lot of performance and as more 3D modeling and rendering software supporting the AMD cards, they are going to perform very well. For example, the latest update from Enscape did start to support the ray tracing off of all the AMD graphics cards. Therefore, these cards are able to perform very well in the ray tracing environment as well. So I am seeing a very good result with this one. Therefore, I am seeing a very good performance with RX 6600. I often look at this website for overall graphical performance comparison and it is a usually good way to compare different type of graphics card and understand how they would perform. One of the other type of number that you want to keep in mind is the VRAM size for very complex projects which has a lot of textures, lots of geometry, then you want to have a graphics card with really high number of VRAM. I believe for 2080 Super, you have eight gigs of VRAM and then RX 6600 has eight gigs of VRAM. And those tend to be moderate and average and good for most type of tasks that you would handle. But if you ever find, or if you're a type of person who does a very complex type of renderings and 3D modelings, then these cards may not be enough for you. Then you have to invest a lot more money for higher VRAM cards such as Quadro cards. Those are very expensive. So if possible, I would actually avoid that route. So my recommendation actually is slim down your models, organize them, clean them so that they're not being so excessive. Therefore, you are able to handle your model with mid to high tier graphics card like these here so yeah that's the route that I would definitely recommend for you to take and I'll leave the links in the description for all the laptops and then eGPUs as well as the graphics card so you guys could see the prices and how they compare to each other in terms of the specs and yeah this was all interesting for me as well because I really wanted to draw differences between two external GPU enclosures as well as the performances of two different type of graphics card from the two different companies and since I haven't really been experienced with AMD graphics card the Radeon series so it was good to be able to test this out and see how it performs against the things that I do. So I hope you have liked it too. And if you did, please like this video and consider subscribing to my channel to continue watching these type of interesting videos. And thank you so much for watching as always. I'll see you next time. Bye.